Okay, so hi everybody. So I'm Amy from Amy Blackburn Wellness. Um, I really appreciate you guys joining me tonight. I know when you have a busy work day, the last thing you really feel like doing is adding one more thing uh, to your already busy day, which is pretty much what we're gonna talk about today is stress, right? And burnout. Um, so at, this, at the time, it, I really do appreciate that you joined me and I really want this to be super laid back casual um, and just time to take it in and to learn something. I hope you walk away this evening knowing something new about the impact of stress on overall women's health. Um, so first, a little background on me. I am an IIN, which is the Inst Institute for Integrative Nutrition, certified health coach and hormonal health coach. Um, I'm more recently a certified gut health practitioner, a gut thrive and five practitioner specifically. And I'm in the process of finishing up my integrative health practitioner certification course as well. And um, so I've learned so much throughout all those courses dating back from 2012 to currently, but one thing remains in common, and that is the impact of stress on the body. In fact, just yesterday, I saw an old video that I had posted back in 2017 um, when I was going through the hormonal health course. And I was talking about my view that I feel like stress and the impact on, its, on the body is going to be talked about more and more in the future. And here we are five years later, and that is the topic of conversation throughout the wellness world. Um, and so it's pretty cool to see that something that I started studying back then is now, is just being the focus of not just uh, holistic health, but also Western medical field. Um, and so that's where it's getting, it's, it's hopeful because for a while there, holistic health and Western med were two separate uh, worlds, but we're starting to see them come together because of the importance of wellness and the importance of helping people learn how to get healthier and live stronger and longer. Um, so tonight I'm going to address a few key topics of in, in women's health. I'm going to address the common health concerns in women, um, the top foods for women's health, self-care for extraordinary life, um, warning signs for women, and the women's wellness uh, <laughs> workshop roadmap. Sorry, my eyes. Um, and so we're going to kind of touch on those things. But first, I just want to start with an overall stress. Uh, I have come into contact with so many people lately. Um, that are coming, looking for vitamins. Basically, they want vitamins. They want, how, how do I overcome stress? Um, and in conversation with them, the reality was they don't fully understand um, how it's affecting the hormones. And so stress is not necessarily a bad thing. We all are going to have stress. Our bodies are equipped to handle stress. Uh, we have what's called the sympathetic nervous system, which is it's designed in our bodies to help us when there's a moment, if you're about to have a car accident um, or someone's chasing you, then your body produces certain hormones, cortisol being one of them. And when your body starts pumping out cortisol, then it starts pumping out more blood sugar and insulin so that you have the energy to combat the threat. But normally speaking, if you have a very healthy stress level, uh, when, the, when the threat is gone, then your cortisol comes back down, your sugar levels come back down, and your insulin level goes back down. The problem that we're seeing in this day and age is people are experiencing chronic stress. Um, they, your body doesn't know the difference between a stress that's going to happen and be done and a stress that's ongoing. Uh, so what are some common chronic stressors? Um, Undereating or overeating, lack of sleep, overexercising or underexercising. It's not just emotional and mental stress, it can be physical as well. Gut dysbiosis, which is digestive issues. Um, there are so many different stressors hormonal imbalances, food sensitivities, 
food allergies. I don't think you're necessarily going to eat a food that you have an allergic reaction to, um, but food sensitivities are super common. And that in and of itself is a stressor on the body. So if you're dealing with lack of sleep, food sensitivity, gut dysbiosis, um, if you're over exercising or under exercising, like we just touched on, or just a, a common hormonal imbalance, um, that is a chronic stress and your body doesn't know the difference. So it's producing more cortisol because of the stressor on the body. And this is where then we have the high blood sugar and high insulin. And this can result in things such as uh, obesity for one, because of cortisol going up, that means cortisol is your fat storing hormone and so is insulin. So you combine these two, right? And now you have this issue with people not being able to lose weight and they don't understand. They could be saying, but I'm eating all the healthiest foods. I'm exercising pretty regularly, like, like they tell me, but I'm not losing weight. In fact, I'm actually gaining weight. Well, because if you're also stressed in other areas, say you're not getting enough sleep and now you're adding on over-exercising and possibly cutting back on your food, caloric intake. Well, now you've taken two more stressors when you already had the stressor of lack of sleep. So now your body's really pumping cortisol, right? And now you're pumping more blood sugar that goes into the bloodstream and then more insulin goes into the bloodstream and insulin's your other fat storing hormone. And you just get this weight gain issue um, and you get your basically leading down the road to pre-diabetic possibly. Um, so it's not very uncommon to see people who are thin, but they might have high blood sugar. And if they have that situation, you go, okay, we got, we need it. What's your stress level, right? Um, so that's a huge way that stress is impacting people's hormones. And so then it can create gut dysbiosis because that can create those little holes in your gut lining, allowing undigested food, protein molecules to now enter your bloodstream in addition to more blood sugar. And it can create this major inflammatory response in the body that can also lead to uh, autoimmune issues that we're seeing in increase, especially in women. And I'm gonna show the handouts um, so that you can see exactly like what, what are common health concerns. But I kind of wanted to touch on that because I don't think people understand Chronic stress is just producing way too much of those stress hormones, cortisol and norepinephrine. Um, and then because of that, it's just creating this domino effect of hormonal dysregulation um, in, the, in, the, in the female body, but also the male body. And it's hard to get well. And so ultimately, we have to help somebody in order for someone to heal we have to get them down out of that sympathetic nervous system and into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the calm. Um, and that's really the only way the body's going to heal fully. Uh, so it's hard to say which one came first, right? Stress creates a lot of the illness, but then in order to heal the illness, we must remove the stress. Um, so we must remove the toxicity and replace uh, the deficiencies. And that's when you can do that, you discover a body imbalance. Um, so that's ultimately the stress impact on the body. Um, and now I'm going to start, I'm going to screen share, I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna go over the handouts that I had sent, or I'm going to be sending these to you guys uh, at the end of the webinar but we'll go over now, I need to get my glasses, but we're going to take one handout and we're just gonna kind of go through them. So common health concerns, um, and we'll, we'll see this. So the first thing that you see here, oh, Paula's, hold it, let me, so the first thing that you're going to see right here under common health concerns for women, chronic fatigue. Personally, that this day and age is what's being called adrenal fatigue, which scientifically it's the HPA axis dysfunction, um, but it's adrenal dysfunction. And that is, and I'm going to go over um, the, the difference between stress and burnout. 
Uh, but chronic fatigue is ultimately adrenal dysfunction. Um, symptoms of chronic fatigue would be consistent exhaustion, uh, oversleeping, brain fog and or memory issues, muscle and joint pain, headaches, and frequent sore throat. Another one that I don't think people are familiar with, adrenal dysfunction, if you find yourself having to frequently urinate, that's a big sign of adrenal dysfunction too, um, and a sign of stress. Uh, so that would be something to pay attention to in addition to some of these other symptoms, uh, chronic exhaustion, over you're sleeping so much, but you're just not rested, right? Um, brain fog, memory issues. Do you just feel like you're having to try so hard to focus um, just to get little tasks done? Like you just have, you might even find yourself not remembering why you walked into the other room. That's a very common symptom of or sign of brain fog. Um, muscle and joint pain, that's, that goes back to that chronic inflammation that stress can create. Um, and then the headaches and the frequent sore throat. And the reason why frequent sore throat is because you have an immune system response. Um, once the body is in chronic stress, uh, again, oftentimes what's associated with that will be gut dysbiosis and you get that leaky gut, and then you start having all those protein molecules that should not be in the bloodstream entering the bloodstream, and now we just have weakened our immune system over time. None of this happens overnight. It takes time for it all to build up. Uh, hormonal dysfunction is another common health concern for women, and again, that will go back to, I, I'll keep joining that to stress, when you produce high levels of cortisol, what you tend to see um, is low are lower levels of progesterone. And progesterone are, you know, that's your happy hormone. That's your hormone to stabilize your mood. It just produces happy mood uh, feelings. Um, and progesterone is also needed for in order to maintain a pregnancy. But what happens when somebody is chronically stressed is cortisol will pull progesterone over to create more, more cortisol so that it can combat the threat. So now we've just lowered progesterone. And with that, we often raise estrogen. And when you have estrogen dominance, again, here comes the weight gain, here comes the exhaustion, here comes um, even PCOS is a common symptom with high estrogen. So you see what I'm saying? It just becomes this domino effect of hormonal imbalance. And it's all coming from cortisol. 90% of the time, if you can balance your cortisol and get that under control, insomnia will go away because when there's high cortisol, there's low melatonin. And so if cortisol is remaining high all day long when it should be declining throughout the day, but it's, it's not declining, it's actually going back up at night. Um, now your melatonin is going to remain low and that's why people cannot sleep. So ultimately it's getting people's stress response down so that cortisol can come down and now we can handle and get everything else in balance um, as far as thyroid, adrenals, I mean, reproductive system. Uh, because one thing you're going to learn is that the body will always do what it needs to do to survive. And if that means other parts of your system are out of whack for some time because it's doing what it needs to survive in the moment, um, it's going to do that. An example of that would be if, if a female is under chronic stress, her body, if her body is not able to keep up with its own self, it's not going to be able to handle carrying a baby. And so for a lot of these reasons, that's where you see it's pulling that progesterone and it can't it can't hold a, a fetus because it's not producing enough progesterone because it needs the progesterone to ward off what it thinks is a threat for survival. Um, and actually it's a chronic stressor that is not a life-threatening situation. And so that's where some people have trouble even with getting um, pregnant and it comes back to that chronic stress. So hormonal dysfunction is huge with women when stress response is too high. And you'll see here, common concern is just stress in general. Um, symptoms, we've kind of gone over low energy, digestive issues, headaches, chest pain. It can mimic a heart attack sometimes if you're having um, cortisol issues. 
uh, frequent colds and loss of libido and, and or ability. Um, so, so stress is a common health concern, but honestly, stress is so associated with chronic fatigue, adrenal dysfunction, and hormonal dysfunction. So combating stress is probably the first thing to, in order to handle all this, uh, all these other common health concerns. Many women have anxiety, um, symptoms of anxiety, trouble breathing, feeling faint, feeling which dizziness, honestly, like dizziness is a major symptom of a, uh, anxiety, feeling of losing control, feeling of panic, chest pain, and heart palpitations. All of those adrenal dysfunction, it's like adrenal fatigue, like uh, it's the fir very first stage, first and second stage of adrenal dysfunction. Um, and that's when you, when you differentiate between stress and burnout. This is more stress. You're hyperactive, you're overwhelmed. Um, there's a sense of urgency. That's more stress and stress impacts the body more physically. Burnout is more, you're, you've almost just flatlined. You're indifferent. Um, you're isolated. You just, you have nothing. You have no juice in your system. Um, you've lost interest in things that used to interest you. Um, it's, you are in, that's, that's like you're burned out on life and you've almost become just, I, I guess the best word to say is you've become numb. Um, and that's the very last stage of adrenal dysfunction. That wired and tired stage is what most people will come to me complaining about. They're in that, they can stay up all night. They can do work, work, work. Um, they're tired and they're feeling signs of anxiety, for instance, but yet their mind is still going and they can work and they can get, they're, they're getting some of their best work. And whenever you hear somebody saying they're a night owl, that's, adrenal dysfunction. It's not that they just can do that, that kind of work at night. They're having adrenal dysfunction because it goes back to cortisol. Cortisol should be going, it should be coming up in the morning, kind of going here midday, and then towards the night, it should be going down, allowing you to sleep better. But people who are dysfunct have adrenal dysfunction, theirs might be high at night. So they're like whipping out some work 2 a.m. There's going to be a point where they can't do that any longer. Their body can't keep up. Now cortisol starts to drop and it never rises again. That's burnout. Um, and oftentimes you don't see anxiety with burnout. You see more depression uh, because you've just lost all, all just any energy or zest for um, life. And, actually, some people might actually start to get nothing's going well in life. I just don't know where I'm going. And we, we can't jump to the conclusion that they have a major issue. They could have cortisol just finally just declined majorly. So always, always, always look a little further than um, just assuming there's a, a mental health issue. Yeah, there is, but can it be resolved? Possibly. So always look at their vitamins and minerals and hormones, um, first and foremost to see, because when all of that starts to dip, um, serotonin and all these other things, uh, let me see, how do you test your cortisol levels? You can get uh, adrenal thyroid hormonal panel done and functional medicine doctors can do that, but you can actually, you can buy that on my website, um, in the equal life, they sell all these at home lab tests. The hair tissue mineral analysis test is another one that I'm going to touch on in order to find out your stress levels, because I'm going to touch on clinical um, symptoms of stress. Um, so anxiety, depression, it's all stress related. Uh, this handout can give you a little more information just on what's common for women, right? Candida, very common. That's yeast overgrowth. Now, what I'm going to tell you though, what, what create, we all have candida within us. It's when it just gets overproduced, overproductive, overgrowth is when it becomes, you have issues, um, common, common symptoms, chronic fatigue, energy issues, digestive issues, uh, yeast infections, difficulty concentrating brain fog, 
um, skin issues and eczema and psoriasis because it's coming out of your skin basically. Um, irritability and mood swings. I think the best thing in terms of knowing if you have a bacterial overgrowth or yeast overgrowth, I think one of the most common symptoms is do you eat one piece of food and feel like you've just bloated it? and you feel full and you just don't even want to eat the rest of the day, that's a huge sign that you have either small intestinal bacterial overgrowth um, or possibly candida. How do people get candida? Well, just say you went on antibiotics because you had something, right? Well, the antibiotics are going to just like, I always think of it like gassing all the gut bacteria. It's just, it's going in there and it's just gassing everything. So it gets rid of all the bad stuff, but it's also ridding your body of the good stuff. So now you have this yeast because antibac uh, antibiotics does not attack yeast. It attacks the bacteria. So now you have this open field of yeast that's just going to go haywire. And that's why oftentimes people get candida um, when they've taken antibiotics. Um, and so again, that's why they say take active life cultures, probiotics uh, to build it back up. It's a little bit more complicated than just doing that. But that again is why you might see somebody suddenly develop candida. It's not uncommon. It's, it, it's easy to easy to overcome um, by eliminating, you know, reducing sugars because that feeds off the of sugar. Um, but uh, again, that's just a common, I won't go too much into that, but that's a common issue with women. And those are some common symptoms. And so the easiest thing to do is you've got to remove added sugar and even natural sugars from your diet so that you're at least not feeding the candida, but there are some other herbs and botanicals that you can add in, um, Pau de Arco, oregano oil, olive leaf, um, to go in and kind of attack uh, the fungi, so to speak, but that would be a whole nother conversation. Um, but it is, it is common, so, but it's also easy to overcome. Um, and again, depression, that's burnout in a lot of people. Uh, more than stress, it's, it's a common sign of burnout. Loss of interest in daily activities, appetite and or weight changes, irritability, self-harming, um, feelings of helplessness, and sleep disturbances and other changes. Um, sleep disturbances, anxiety too. Insomnia is huge. Again, it goes back to cortisol is too high. Cortisol is too high with anxiety often. And then that creates high blood sugar at night, um, which then creates that anxiety feeling. So anxiety in a lot of people, it's actually blood sugar dysregulation. Um, and again, it goes back to cortisol. Uh, but when your sh blood sugar starts to spike and then it can drop when you're sleeping, you might have that feeling of anxiety. Um, so oftentimes people who are in adrenal dysfunction is highly recommended that they eat. There's certain snacks um, that I give people recipes uh, known to calm the nervous system, balance the blood sugar and allow for more restful sleep because you don't want that blood sugar, because there's so much blood sugar dysregulation with adrenal dysfunction. Um, and so you'll, those go hand in hand. And so that often creates the, the thought that you have anxiety and really it's just your blood sugar is unstable. That was a huge thing for me. Uh, I was having to eat every two, two and a half hours because you drop in energy. Um, I don't know what just happened. I just saw that Paula, I thought she was in, but, um, and so the blood dysregulation is what's creating that, all those, the heart palpitation, because low blood sugar is a stressor on your body. So your body thinks it's being attacked and it's going into, um, increasing the heart rate, dilating your pupils, all those things, which I'll touch on. Um, I need those snacks for better rest, half a banana, pink Himalayan salt, and a few cashews, if you can handle that. Um, the other one's golden milk, the golden milk recipe, um, with maybe just a little bit of collagen add it for the protein. Cause basically the snack wants a healthy fat carb and, um, protein source, uh, golden milk would be perfect. Uh, 
a perfect, those are the two main go-tos. Um, so then depression, like I said, is absolute burnout stage. Uh, I, that's when you're in what's the latter stage of adrenal dysfunction. Um, again, the first stage, you're not really thinking anything's wrong. You're just a little off. Middle stage, wired but tired, but man, you can produce work. Man, you're the best person on the job. Um, and you can just keep working till the, till the 2 a.m., for instance. And then once you hit that ladder stage, you're good for nothing. And it can even affect your work and your relationships and stuff because you look totally fine on the outside. Um, people won't understand when you're telling them five minutes previously, you looked like you had energy. And then the next five minutes, you're like, I can't even get off the couch. I'm so tired. That is, that is when you're in absolute burnout. Um, and so those are moments when we have to take the body, you're in a catabolic state, which is it's breaking down. Um, and we have to give yourself rest and recovery and reduce that stress response so that you can recover and heal. Uh, and those are like adrenal dysfunction is just, it's so common right now. Um, the number, like I said, the number of people coming in to where I'm helping with vitamins and minerals, and they're just looking for supplements uh, to cut. And the number of people that are and even children that are looking for um, melatonin is just a sign that I think we have beyond just mental and emotional stress. We have to look at what we're eating, and uh, unhealthy food is a stress on our body. Um, so here are some warning signs for women. Do you have any of these symptoms? Um, if so, it's, it's good to speak with your doctor, uh, loss of period or very heavy periods that could be again, uh, estrogen dominance. Um, there, there's something going on with your estrogen and progesterone. There's no question, uh, inexplicable weight gain or weight loss, hair loss. Another thing that so many women deal with. Um, and then we're, you're totally, you're like constantly being told, um, it's just what comes with getting older. And it's not necessarily the truth. You guys, I had that said to me that that was how many years ago? Um, 13 years ago, I had that. I was told that I was going in with anxiety, sudden panic attacks. Um, it, it just that my, I was totally dysregulated with cortisol, but I was told it was just part of getting older. Uh, rat, and I was handed an anxiety medication and I'm so glad I did not take that doctor's recommendation. And I went home and I did the research and through my own research, I realized, you know, and at the time I thought it was just iron deficiency, but if I backtrack now that I know more, um, iron deficiency was part of the issue, but it was due to leaky gut. I wasn't, I was malabsorbed. I had malabsorption issues because my gut was so messed up. And I think going back, I've always had a very high stress response in my body. And I've just, I've always been just wired, like wired. And I've just never, I've never been a calm person. And so I think that created leaky gut in addition to like a lot of chemical foods, right? Sugar-free stuff that we were all eating at one point thinking it was good for us, um, created leaky gut. And because of leaky gut, I had malabsorption issues, nutrient deficiencies, which created the hair loss. Um, I, I would restore it. I would always like get to a place where it was growing back in, but then I would have another bout of like excessive hair shedding until I really did a, a gut healing protocol about two years ago. Um, and it's just seemed to balance out. So hair loss, very common. Um, and there's multiple reasons you may be experiencing that, but often it, look at your nutrients um, and, and your stress level, you know, because when you're stressed, you guys, your body requires more nutrients to just overcome the stress. And so because of that, uh, you're, you're depleted. So you've, you've got to make sure you're taking a good multivitamin. Um, B complex is so important for stress, vitamin C, B complex in addition to some adaptogens. Um, but that's a big reason why people end up with symptomatic and they're like, but I, I, I'm eating well and this and that. Yeah, but it takes that much more of this vitamin and this vitamin just to combat the stress. So now you're just, you're just on that survival living, you're not living optimally. And that is the difference between, um, I guess you could say thriving 
and surviving in life, optimal wellness is what you want to achieve. And so if you go to a medical doctor, Western Med, and they give you lab work and they say you're normal. Well, normal and optimal are not always the same thing. You can be told you're normal, but symptomatic. So for example, vitamin D, you might have a vitamin D level of just say 30. According to Western Med, that's normal. You're going to be symptomatic at 30 still. Optimal is 65 to just, just I think it's like roughly 90, 95. So that's a huge difference between 30 and 65. So if you're sitting down here at 30, I think even vitamin D is hair loss. Um, you could have all these other things going on, but the doctor's telling you your, your, your labs are normal, but are they optimal? And that's where functional medicine doctor, naturopathic doctor, health coach can come in and can kind of help you. Um, moving forward, iron's another thing, ferritin. They'll tell you you're normal. Oftentimes I think it's like even, I was 23 and I was normal, but man, I was symptomatic that summer having major sudden panic attacks, blood sugar dysregulation, all of that. But through my research, 65 to 90 is where you want to be. But I was told I was normal at 23. So it's really important um, that you just, you get your information, but sometimes you have to be your own health advocate or know who to go to uh, that can help you in understanding optimal wellness. Um, because that's what we want, right? We don't want to just die longer. We want to live longer. And what we have seen, and I, I think it's on the, the turnaround, I think it's changing, but what we have seen is people, you know, Western medicine, it's absolutely necessary. But then there are situations where it's sure it's keeping people alive, but are they living, right? Are they living? Are they healthy? Because I have seen with my own eyes, people who are 80s and 90s that are living and thriving um, with their life. <laughs> uh, so that is a common hair loss. Extreme fatigue, we've just touched on a lot of this. Digestive upset, super common. Um, depression, isolation. Sometimes people will experience isolation. Um, when you experience that, that's a warning sign that you're just spent and your, your, your body and your brain can't take anymore. Um, and, and sometimes people need that to recover. So if their body is an absolute catabolic state, which again is like <laughs> breakdown, Taihan, which is in breakdown um, stage, you can mute your, uh, so that no one hears you. Um, but when your body's in that breakdown stage, <laughs> then you have to do these, you have to do certain things to rest um, and certain things that are healthy for you, which again, I'm going to kind of try to touch on that at the very end. Uh, but a test to get for the hair tissue mineral analysis test can test and tell you how stressed out your body is because your elect, and I'm going to touch on that. I keep kind of saying, I'm going to touch on that how your electrolytes um, will shed a lot of insight on if your body's stressed and uh, if you're breaking down protein, muscle tissue, um, that's another huge sign that your body's under stress um, and, and things that you can get done more from a functional medicine doctor than the Western med world. But uh, I think that over time, I think these tests are gonna become more common because of the impact we're seeing of stress on, on our wellness. Um, so another warning sign would be you don't want to work out anymore. You may have been somebody who likes to exercise and you just don't want to do it anymore because again, that's your body doing what it has to do to help you survive. Um, when your body's like, I have got to rest, I've got to recover, you, you may start to lose interest because again, it's just intuitively your body knows what's best for you. Your body knows what it needs to do to heal. And so when somebody's in that catabolic state, you can't do the intense workouts. You can't go, 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 because now you're just constantly pulling your body further back. Um, so if somebody comes to me and they're in that middle, that wired but tired stage, and, and they're working out six days a week, which was me, and five days, and they're doing like long cardio, weight training, you have to ta taper them back. And sometimes that can be for four to six weeks, that only walking, 
only walking to calm the nervous system and to get that body out of stress mode. Um, so I think one of the most common symptoms for many women, especially those who work out, I don't feel like working out. I'm just, I don't feel like it. Um, and that's, that's okay. So in those moments, listen to your body and maybe do more walks in nature, stretching, yoga, those kind of things that are known to definitely calm your nervous system. Um, very important. Yes, teachers are in constant stress mode. Yeah, yeah, I know. Too many expectations from every outside source. And we're seeing a lot of teachers and coaches um, leaving their, their, their careers because of so much stress on the body. Um, nurses, you know, we're seeing a lot of people in the nursing field even walk away because the body will always tell you, right? When you finally decide I can't do it anymore, that is ultimately your body telling you, you need to do this in order to survive and overcome um, what you're dealing with. Um, brain fog, again, we've touched on that. Um, the stress response has huge impact on be, what happens with the brain fog. And I, again, so much of this goes back to your gut. When you get those tiny openings in your gut lining, those undigested food particles and protein molecules that should never be entering the bloodstream are now entering the bloodstream and now they're going up to your brain, causing brain fog. Um, so you have to really get that inflammatory response down. Um, heavy metal toxicity that's that we're all kind of surrounded by. We're not going to never have heavy metals be exposed to heavy metals, but when we're having too much exposure um, and that gets into our bloodstream, it can cause an inflammatory response and it's causing so many issues. Um, and brain fog and Alzheimer's and dementia are two, three, three of the things that we're seeing um, a result of. And again, it's, it's just getting that stress response um, and yeast infections, which we kind of touched on that with candida, um, candida overgrowth. Uh, so those are common, very common uh, symptoms. And if you have any of those, you really want to look a little further in before it gets worse, because that's what, what the body does is that we, we get something, one thing. And if we don't take care of that one thing, it grows into something and then something more. And then people are facing a longer recovery and then it's, and it's hard. Sometimes when you let things accumulate, recovery is harder. Then they get frustrated and then they want to give up and just stay where they are, right? And ex accept life as they are. And you don't have to do that. So the best thing you can do is when you start to notice one thing, is try to get it under control ASAP. The beauty of when you actually get your body back in balance, you notice those things so much faster. And then you can kind of deal with it so much quicker. But honestly, you guys, people are walking around. The new norm is to be sick. Um, and, and we don't even know the difference. You know, the, it's just normal to have all of these kind of things. It's absolutely normal. And almost people are telling you, it's just what, it's like we talked about, it's just what happens when you get older, you know? And that's really not the case. You know, you really can keep control over your health and your optimal wellness. I mean, my mom is a great example um, and, and whatnot. And I think one area that we're going to touch on is what really has helped her uh, overcome stress and, and, and handle it. But um, those are common symptoms of loss of period or heavy periods, inexplicable weight gain, weight loss, hair loss, extreme fatigue, digestive distress, depression, isolation, cessation of exercise, um, and especially if you used to love it, brain fog and yeast infections, very common warning signs for women. Um, and now we're gonna look at, I wanna go over the top causes, which again, it's, it's all very similar. A lot of this is just adding on, I wanna in, make this a little bigger. I don't know, maybe it's just my eyesight, um, but causes. So as you see here, top causes of women's health issues and one way to point yourself in the right direction because you can overcome all this. That's, that's, the, that's what you wanna keep telling people, friends and family and everybody, you can get healthier, you can feel better. Um, a big cause is career pressure. 
or dissatisfaction. So ultimately, when we talk about stress and what's the one thing we can do to start um, reducing the stress response, uh, add things into life that you like. You know, you got you have to be doing things in life that bring you joy. Um, and I think for so long we've been in survival mode and we've just trudged along doing things because we have to. Um, and so now you're seeing, and this is why I wanted to do this workshop, because you're seeing so many women now go, I want more out of life. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to look this way. I don't want to feel like I'm just going back and forth, either being in your career or the mom and stuff. And you've lost a sense of like your own purpose and your own self. Um, and what brings you joy. And it's, it's great because you're seeing people now acknowledge this and they're trying to find ways to figure out how to overcome that, right? Um, and so it's really important to, to help people and to teach people these kind of things uh, as a way to overcome stress and to get healthier. Uh, so I think people are aware and that's good. Now they just need to understand hows, the whys and the hows. Um, so career pressure or dissatisfaction, unfulfilling relationships, no spirituality or faith. And that's where I feel like my mom, um, it's been her stress reliever. And I really think it's kept her balanced. Whether you want to be religious or not, that's up to you. But, but it's how can you go about life with some form of just taking pressure off of you and knowing like how to surrender. Um, Gabby Bernstein, her books are great. I highly recommend them. Uh, I'm not necessarily a religious person, but spiritual and her books are great for helping you um, develop a mindset. I think to, to add a little bit of number three into your life to help you ease with deal with stress. Um, poor diet or inactivity. Um, when you're eating a bunch of chemically created foods, it's disrupting your natural chemical balance for one. Um, and a lot of that food is not, it's nutrient free. It's not full of nutrients. So if you're stressed and you're eating a lot of junk, um, that does not provide any more vital vitamins and nutrients. Now you're depleted even more. So you're probably like dipping way down into deficiencies which are going to create all of these other things in your body. Um, so it, again, it's like, you have to just kind of one thing at a time, but start the process of fixing one little thing into the neck, fixing, I hate to use that word, but um, rebalancing, I guess is the better word. Um, so poor diet and inactivity, household responsibilities, cause stress, right? If you're being pulled in every other direction and you've never taken the time for yourself, um, eventually you're going to burn out and you're going to take that out on everybody else. At some point, you're just going to lose it. Um, and it's going to, it's going to come out. And then of course, and people say you're the bad person, right? You've probably all have experienced that, but at the end of the day, it's because you gave too much of yourself without recharging your own battery. Um, so again, the body will always do what it has to do to help you survive. Um, and if it makes you lose control in a moment to be a warning sign that you have to uh, address something, then that might be your warning sign. Um, societal pressure uh, could be a huge cause. So let's look at some solutions because yeah, you can have the explanation, but now you have to decide how do I solve it? Um, learn to love the work you have or find work you love because you spend a majority of your day on the job that if you are spending all that time and you're in misery, you're going to end up unhealthy. And it's, it's, you're just going down the wrong path. Um, and so sometimes you can't, you know, I, I finally, you know, I, as I'm reading this, I finally decided to quit a career that was just putting me down the path of like, I just couldn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't good for me. Um, and so I had to work, I had to make, keep that job while I was working to make an, what you call, might call an exit plan um, in, in the meantime. But as long as you know that you're working towards something that you might find more fulfilling, because um, I know you can't just quit your job when you have bills and stuff like that. So in the meantime, you have to find ways to appreciate certain things on the job that you might like uh, to help you. But that's a big one because you spend so much of your time at work and with the people that you work with that if that's out of sync with what you're out of alignment with you, 
you're probably going to have some, some stress-related illnesses. Um, set mandatory weekly date nights with your partner or your friends. I think don't ever lose those friendships uh, because even if you have a good relationship with your significant other, again, there's just certain females connect with females in different ways than they would per perhaps with their husband or their significant other. Um, and you can vent with people in different ways. Uh, super important, social interaction and social friendships are probably one of the greatest factors in someone's overall wellness and happiness. Um, that's been shown. Uh, experiment with meditation, yoga, or religion. Um, find what works for you, but that's gonna calm your nervous system. Uh, eat more green vegetables and try a new form of exercise this week. That would be a good thing. Green vegetables are just really detoxifying for the body. So it's going to help you reduce that toxic load and it's going to purify your blood. Um, so it's going to help with it. blood circulation, which that in general just helps metabolism is actually movement in your body going against what people think is fat burning. It's actual just movement, a good healthy movement um, throughout the body so that you're not getting things backed up in the body. Um, and designate self-care time and find out what works for you aside from what is de re deemed normal. I, I, I fit, number seven is I have never worried about that. I have always known what I need in order to be here. Um, some people are introverts and some people are extroverts and you, you, you recover in different ways. And so like, you have to know what you need to do and you have to know those symptoms and those signs of burnout. Um, because if you don't do what you need to do to recover, then you're going to just keep getting sicker. So it's okay. If you don't fit into what other people think you should be doing, it's okay. Find what works for you. Um, so those are the top causes of women's health concerns, career, unfulfilling relationships, no spirituality or faith, poor diet or inactivity, household responsibilities, putting yourself last. I, oh, I skipped that one. But basically that goes back to everyone else is taking up your, your you're fulfilling everyone's needs, but your own. Um, learn to say no, in other words. And then societal pressure, right? Everyone who's just like, oh, you know, you need to, you, you have to know what's who you are, what fills your needs and what you need to just be healthy. Uh, so those are common causes. Now, what kind of foods, you know, and a lot of these you probably kind of know are good for you because it's been touched upon. Um, there are, there are a couple on here that mm, I'm kind of like, you might want to do a little less of. Um, here are 25 power foods for women. There are many more, but if you start with these, you will feel a big difference in your health. You're just going to see most are whole foods, plant-based whole foods. You want to eat primarily plant-based with very high quality animal protein. The only one really on here, I'm not a fan of dairy because dairy is highly inflammatory for the body. It increases mucus in the body increases congestion in the body. Um, organic makes it a little bit better. Raw milk is totally opposite though. And that's actually part of my gut healing protocol if you can tolerate it. It's not something that you have to do, but I had a client and she actually, I have two clients that have used raw milk because it's really healing for somebody who can't digest foods well. Um, so it sounds, but you have to know where you're getting it from. But so, Really, the only one on here um, is the Greek yogurt. I would, I would say go more with dairy-free um, to cut down your inflammation. But if you look here, a lot of these are just really good for your hormones. Um, they're high in vitamins, high in nutrients, mushrooms, high in vitamin D. Um, sprouts, broccoli sprouts can really help your adrenal dysfunction. Uh, it, it helps you create more glutathione. Um, which is the major antioxidant of the body. So that was a big part of uh, an adrenal recovery program. Um, salmon, I think we all, salmon's just so good for the body. Uh, high in omega-3. So a lot of these you're going to see are cruciferous vegetables help detoxify the body. And 
bring your estrogen levels down. One of the best things for balancing estrogen, um, garlic, super anti-inflammatory. <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> um, garlic, but, but, but I'm going to touch on some of this. So a lot of this is really, really good food. Oatmeal, I'm kind of up in the air about just because grains can be, it just depends on your body. Um, but the, but a lot of these foods that are deemed really healthy, if you have gut dysbiosis, so many of these foods will be taken out until you resolve your issue. Because I'm going to, going to take garlic, for instance, if you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, it is going to bloat so many people so fast that you can't eat garlic just because it's healthy, because in that moment, it's going to keep aggravating your inflammatory response. So that's why it's important sometimes that pay attention to when you eat a meal and try to pinpoint if you bloat it within minutes, try to possibly figure out. And I always recommend don't have a meal with tons of different foods in one sitting. Um, one, it's so hard for the body to digest so many different foods, but two, you might not be able to pinpoint when a food's not working for you in that time. Um, and it can be an indication of you want to do a little bit more investigation into what's causing the gas and the bloat. But most of these foods, just very anti-inflammatory, omega-3 rich, um, healthy carbs, the quality carbs, sweet potatoes, great for adrenals. Uh, so if you're low and with, with the exhaustion and stress, sweet potatoes are one of the best foods to add into your plan. Um, as are, you know, salmon anti-inflammatory foods, but when you're very low it with, when you're in adrenal dysfunction, you can't cut carbs. So people doing keto diets, um, it's going to eventually affect potentially your, your adrenals and your thyroid. Uh, the keto diet is okay temporarily as a medical diet more than it is a lifestyle diet. Um, but those are just some foods and I'm going to be sending, you'll receive an email with these handouts that you can read over on your own time. Um, so self-care, if you don't start adding self-care, um, you're probably going to continue to experience uh, stress. And this, this is, I mean, I, my morning routine, um, oh, I saw that. Um, my morning, oops, where did I just go? My morning routine is a, is, it's a must. It's, I will wake up because it's my stress relieving part of my day. Um, so as you'll see here, self-care is not frivolous. It's absolutely essential to an incredible life. Um, when you fill your cup first, you can give to others authentically and deeply. So some of some ideas, journaling, I like to do that um, in the morning, uh, spend five to 15 minutes, start with just five, because you want to find ways that don't feel like uh, a chore, because you won't do it. You want to find way, things that will that you look forward to. Um, journaling is great, and you can, you can do it however you want to do it, um, but it just gets out of your head sometimes what's going on in it too much. For me, I like to write five things I'm grateful for each day. Um, I like to write my intentions. So I will start out something such as today I choose. I, I love this quote by Brene, Brene Brown. I think that's her name. Um, today I choose courage over comfort. Or sometimes I have to write today I choose patience. You know, if I feel like I'm already here, um, or you, you, you could even say today, I intend, I intend, I intend. And that it really does set your mindset for the rest of the day. Um, morning meditation, again, I do a little bit of that. I little essential oil in the palm of my hand. Something that you can just start with is I, I like to use the essential oil, but I, breathing in six deep breaths, hold for six and then exhale for six. Um, that can be just one thing you start with this week. Breathe in six deep breaths, hold it at the top for six breath, like six count, and then exhale for six and just do five or six rounds of that. Try that and see how it just, and there's something about when I use lavender essential oil and make sure you use not a synthetic kind, but a good one. Um, doTERRA is probably my favorite. Um, but there, there's something about when I use a lavender, you really do feel like this sensation, like suddenly my, like right here, will kind of feel like it relaxes. 
Um, and there are days where I just feel like I can't get into it and that's normal and don't beat yourself up. Um, but it has become a routine and I started doing this. Oh, we were in Colorado, 2017, I think. So five years and I haven't stopped. Reading is another one for me. So I do like five, five, and then I read about 10 pages, roughly 10 pages. Um, but I have time to do that in the morning. But even when I had to be on the job at nine in the morning, I would wake up really early because it just set my tone for the rest of the day. Um, and then you want to find exercise that aligns with what you like. Don't force something because everybody else tells you it's good. And honestly, you guys, walking three times a day for 30 minutes, and especially if you're burned out, um, walk at least one walk in nature can seriously help. Um, because when you lower that stress response, you're lowering your cortisol, you're lowering, you're stabilizing your blood sugar, you're bringing your insulin levels down right there, you're slashing the, the chance of pre-diabetic, right? Obesity, um, because everything's about stabilizing your blood sugar. They, it's about stabilizing your blood sugar, but in the end, it's also about stabilizing cortisol um, and keeping cortisol in a, a functional level and not dysfunctional. Um, so if you can start with anything, one, one walk outside in nature um, where it's just calm and it's quiet, not on a road where they're speeding by, you know, somewhere where it's calm and that can have a tremendous, and it can just get you enjoying that, uh, just doing that each day. Um, so let's see here, massage. You know, I think we're all familiar with that. Some people may not like it. And honestly, scalp massage, massage and facial are probably the best place. Well, it's everywhere because we're, we're a system of nerves coming off our spine. So because of nerves coming off our spine everywhere, massage is great for calming that nervous system. Um, but the scalp and the facial, sacral, uh, what is it? it there are the certain nerves in your face that are known to be very calming for the body. Um, a bath, a hot bath, add some Epsom salt and some lavender. Epsom salt will help relax your muscles um, and also help detoxify. If you can get the bath water to as hot as you can handle it. Trust me, you might start sweating at some point, but that's going to also help you detoxify. Um, and lavender just helps calm and, and soothes the body and the mind. Um, a hot towel scrub. Again, it's very similar to dry brushing. Uh, you just fill hot water, scrub, you know, and you just wring it out and then just circulate, circulate, circular motions. Um, you're going to kind of just kind of like bathe your body, but you always go toward the heart. So bottom, my internet is unstable. I hope this, not sure why, um, but always move toward the heart. So if you're going from body up, leg up towards the heart, shoulder down towards the heart, um, and then dry brushing, you just get, you can find those everywhere now. Very good for lymphatic movement so that you don't get that lymphatic drainage clogged is how I think of it. And when it gets clogged, water retention. And so if you're experiencing a lot of water retention or puffiness, definitely try. I've started doing this again um, each morning. I try to do it at least three times a week. Um, so I'll have to read over it. Yes, lymphatic. So it's very important. That's all of these are part of my, oops, my gut healing protocol. Um, let me see what else, bath, hot towel, dry brushing, oil massage, just pampering, whatever you can do that you enjoy, you know, find things that you enjoy doing, um, that it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be nails. I, I hate getting my nails done to be honest, but I do love a massage or, um, I like a good going to a nice little coffee house that has a good energy about it. That's pleasing to me. So you have to find what works for you. Just that, that time to give yourself time to just be and, and not be on the schedule, to be honest. Um, and then closet purging, that's just an example. When you minimize stuff, it just automatically calms your nervous system. So if you can get rid of clothes that you never wear, get rid of stuff, um, and, you, and you're in clean spaces, it will really just bring your stress level down. Um, so getting all the clutter gone. Um, is a big, big piece. So let me see if there was any, now I just am going to, sh I want to get, if you ask me what, 
your number one thing to start doing that's going to have probably the most impact on your well being um, it's your sleep. Because you can't do all those other things when you're exhausted. So, again, I'm sending this to you in an email, but tips for sounder sleep. Um, a big one, you want to stop eating two to three hours for bed because your body, when it's digesting, digesting, when you're trying to sleep, uh, it's, it's just probably going to have you uncomfortable and keep you awake. Um, minimum 12 hour overnight fast. So if you, you want to go about 12 hours between dinner and breakfast, um, and fast drinking a cup of coffee breaks the fast, but to the best of your ability, if you can do that, that would be the, one of the best things for your body and your weight control. Um, make room, make your room pitch black. There are lots of companies sell those really good covers. So if you're wondering why sometimes you can sleep better in a hotel, that's probably why they have those, uh, what do you, they have the curtains that are pitch black, make your room pitch black, um, wake up to light. So if you've heard of like the wake up lights where you can set your alarm and it just gradually, my phone does this. Um, I can't think of the name of the company. There's a company now that's really popular, but it just gradually. So it doesn't startle your nervous system. That's the, so when you think back to way back in way what whatever the time it was um when people would go to bed when the we had no electricity archaic time i don't know if that's the time but you'd go to bed when there was no electricity and you would wake up when the sun came up that's basically how your body's naturally made to wake up um, cool down so keep your bedroom about 65 to 68 degrees um, that would be ideal uh, so that your body can sleep more readily, more <laughs> readily, um, breathable sheets and covers, bamboo sheets and hypoallergenic covers are excellent, but the bamboo sheets, um, are probably some of the best that you can get white noise, use a noise machine to eliminate outside noises. Um, I've used those before when I, especially when I was dealing with insomnia, um, electronic free zone. Ideally, you don't have your cell phone anywhere near your bed. Um, most of us use that for alarm. So it makes it a little bit harder. Um, so again, that's ideally, uh, wind down, dim household lights one to two hours before and do relaxing activities. So you don't want to have this room that's like super bright. And then you're trying to go to bed right after that. You have to bring, because when you dim the light and you bring the lights down, you're starting to get your melatonin to rise. Um, and it, it just helps your body start to produce melatonin. Um, what else? No napping if, if possible. Now, if you're in severe adrenal dysfunction, you have to. You know, it's, it's almost like you have to give your body what it needs. But in general, you don't want to nap. Um, but if you need to, only about 20 minutes before 2 p.m. And then supplements, there are suppl there are tons of supplements out on the market for this. Um, and I have some suggestions if you are looking for some, especially if you're in cortisol dysfunction, um, there are some times when you need it. And uh, at GABA is a great one, natural calm sleep support. If you're struggling with sleep, GABA or the natural calm sleep support has GABA, L-theanine, um, melatonin's in there. With melatonin, you do not want to take it any longer than four to eight weeks because it's going to really mess up your natural production. Um, but there are supplements out there because if you're not getting your sleep, you guys, your it affects your blood sugar, your insulin, cortisol, all of it. It's just going to, and, and then you you just don't have the focus or the energy. I mean, just think about it. You crave more sugar. You have no interest to work out. Um, you're irritable with people. So you, then you don't even really, you just, you can't function well. So if you can do one thing this week, I would say, try your best. You want seven to nine hours of sleep, um, anything below seven. And you're really dipping into, uh, some, it, it's going to affect, every, it's just going to be a domino effect of everything else. And, and that's why like people that work night shift, it is hard is so hard for them to stay healthy because our hormones are just so dysregulated. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't see all the comments, but those are some of the major, those are the handouts that you'll be getting. Um, 
and I'm gonna stop sharing uh, from the, the workshop. So they'll just be sent to you. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be pretty much everything. Uh, I'm gonna go really, really fast over clinical signs of stress things that you can test at home. If your resting heart rate is 70 plus beats, you're under stress. Um, if your blood pressure, I think we all know this, 130 over 85. If, you're, if you have low body temperature, and I don't think a lot of people understood this. If you have body temperature below 98, that is a sign that your body is under, it's trying to recover and it's stressed out. Um, I always had one that was 97 and I never knew it. Um, but that's a body, that's a, often to, a sign of adrenal dysfunction. Um, Flu-like symptoms after exercise or a stressful event, um, dilated pinpoint pupils. So if your pupils are always dilated, again, that's a sign that you're under chronic stress. Um, higher low cortisol, I already touched on that. You can get the adrenal thyroid hormone test, high low electrolytes. So again, test your electrolytes. If they're high or low, your body's under stress. Um, and you can get the hair tissue mineral analysis test to do that. Higher low blood sugar. Um, again, that's a common one because of the cortisol producing more blood sugar. Um, or if it's suddenly low, then it's also a sign that your body's been under stress for far too long. And you're starting to really hit that exhaustion stage. Um, High CRP, which is C-reactive protein. Uh, and that's acute, and that is when you have acute inflammation throughout the body. So a high C-reactive protein. Homocysteine is inflammation in the arteries. Um, LDH, that's a test that you can get to, to tell if you have tissue breakdown. And when you're super stressed, you have tissue breakdown going on in the body, catabolic, like I touched on. Um, high potassium is another one that shows is a sign that you're under a lot of stress. Um, so those would be clinical signs of stress that you, if you get blood work and you have any of those, I think the common ones that people or the things that people were not aware of is the body temperature and uh, the, what was the other one? The body temperature. And I think I didn't touch on one, the low, oh, low blood pressure. I didn't talk about that low blood pressure. If you are below 100 or below, you're under stress. And they used to tell me all the time, oh, it's because you, it's because you run, it's because of this. And I was so depleted. When your temperate body, when your blood pressure is low, you don't have enough juice to get going. So you're just exhausted all of the time. And I had so many people tell me for, I, had, I was in the 95s, like reg, 95 over 60, um, it could be like a hundred over 60 and it was just like, you're fit, you're run, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to tell them something's not right. Um, and so until I took this one course, did I realize the, the body temperature and the blood pressure, two common signs of adrenal dysfunction. Um, but yeah, the fit, but stressed. Yes. Um, so these are all just things like just to be aware of. Um, and why you can't underestimate the impact of stress on the body. Um, it's, it's going, it's, so if you can do anything for your health right now, and you can't think about everything, right? Just try to get more sleep and try to get outside and walk in nature once a day for 30 minutes, um, just to start lowering your stress response. Because when you start feeling better, then you start feeling more motivated to now start eating healthier, right? Then if you can add in one or two healthy things to eat, now you're feeling better again. Okay, maybe now I can do a little bit more. So those are things that I do with my clients is you can't just throw this all out at one time. You stay in something for about four or six weeks. So when people see like a package plan and they're like three months, six months, that's so long but it's because you can't do all this at one time. You can't throw. What, what you see happening with people is they do these programs for 21 days and they go all in and all hard and they've, get, they've gotten cut and they're, they've lost body weight. But you know what? Now they've raised their cortisol levels and now their cortisol's up. Now they're feeling tired, exhausted, sore. And then they, jump, they go off the bandwagon and then they just, you go up and down. So what you have to do is you have to just stay in something for about four to six weeks and build your body up slowly, but surely. 
then when you each little step, you feel better, you feel better, you feel better. And when you feel better, you feel more motivated. And when you've really experienced true health, then you don't want to go back to what it felt like before. And you're more motivated. You're not going to live perfectly. You're not going to have perfect health and perfect stuff, but you're just going to start feeling better little by little by little. But all right. Well, that's pretty much, uh, I don't see it. It was what the time is. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining in. Um, I hope I felt like at moments, uh, it was a lot of information I know, but that's why I'm sending you the handouts so that you'll just receive it. You should receive it. You should have already received it because I sent it out to be on a certain time. Um, take time, read over them. If you ever have any questions, my email uh, is on the bottom of those the email or my personal email is a link on the bottom of the email. Um, you can always reach out, uh, ask me anything. We can schedule a consultation. But when you start to notice one little thing, get on top of it because before it snowballs into so many other things and now you're just overwhelmed and you just can't even fathom the thought of, of the healing journey, so to speak, or getting healthier. Um, but yeah. But yeah, so that was pretty much stress, symptoms, common concerns, what, what kinds of foods, look at that paper um, and see how many of those you can add in this week. Um, but that will be all and just stay tuned and I will have other things coming up down the road. Um, and I'll, so make sure you're signed up for my newsletter because that's where I'll be putting all that out. But uh, yeah, all right, guys, thank you for joining me and I will... See you next time.